It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's up? Not none, you know, Madel. Man, on. hold up, man. Hold up, man. This is the one I've been trying to get to happen for a while, too. Mm -hmm. I'm excited as hell. I'm here, though, I'm here. with my boy. T-Rail, what's up, baby? What's poppin'? I'm here. Man. I'm here with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm man. I'm hey, with man. You. I ain't playing no games. Oh, yeah. you don't get that. <laughs> How's that sound better, right? Yeah, it sound so, better. Yeah, man. So, just, uh, man, uh, I've been trying to get you over here. I know you be traveling. I know you be doing your thing, shows and everything. I understand business, right? Mm -hmm. But, boy, I was show fighting for you. Everywhere you go, I see you. I get upset. I told you that already. Yeah. You know, I be like, man, I got to get him on, on boss talk. There's no and way it, I was, I was, I was going to be in Dallas and not come all at you. We, 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 we another totally thing, that, you know, I'd have, I'd have found you. I'd have, I'd have I came where you was at. I'm looking at your tour dates and all that. Oh, you yeah. came to me. What? Sound like all a stalker, is. don't it? Sound like a stalker. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was me. <laughs> hey, that's what makes great blogs. You know what I'm saying? I just thought I, you, I, I definitely, uh, I'm a big fan. I love, I love the way that your energy is, even before the music, just your character. For sure. That that sticks out to me when I when I look at what you do, man. You know, and, and you know, I'm I'm definitely a sucker for the ones who really stomp down parents. So that's something I've been doing for years. You know how I am about mm -hmm. that. For sure. A good father, man, and all that. I, that's, that's what I'm trying to push. So when I see that, I get excited, man. Oh, yeah, I'm all about raising my children better than I was raised. For yeah. sure, for sure. You so know, I, I like the way how you say that because before we get into that, <laughs> I want to know how you were raised. Uh -oh. I want to know the area you came from. I want to know everything that has to do with your background I'm that you're Topeka. willing to tell. I'm from Topeka, Topeka, Kansas. Okay. Triple six zip code. You know, uh, it's tough where I'm from. I'm from I, live, I grew up in apartments in Topeka like, with my grandma since mm. I was two. Man. Grandma life is good because grandma be spoiling kids. Grandma's life is good. But my grandma had neuropathy in her legs and she had uh, she had diabetes. So she was always asleep. She... Mm. Um, if you wake her up, then you get your ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? She was always asleep, so like you, what I really is had neuropathy. Those, neuropathy is like a very uh, bad pain. It's uh, a lot of people get it. Some people get it in their arms. She got it in her, her left leg really bad, mm. and it a, hurts a lot. So she would take. So that's why she go to sleep. She would take medication over. And, that's why. That's sleep. how she passed. Mm. Her heart just stopped from all that medication. medication. That's stuff bad on your heart. See, that's what I can't stand. You know. We go to doctors to try to get better, but when, people don't understand when you read all of these medications, they say all these side effects. Yeah. You know, yes, it cures this, or yes, it helps this, but it has this long amount of mm -hmm. side effects. And I'm like, are you, people don't, people take it because they're in pain. They yeah. don't care about everything else, but they don't realize that you're messing up everything else in everything your body. Else. Your body's a natural healer. Yeah. Uh, if you treat it right, you'll, yeah. I mean, I don't get sick much because yeah. I, I really don't take medicine. Mm. I can't stand going to doctors something about me but yeah i was raised by her and she uh she would sleep a lot so i was one of the kids that had to do everything on his own mm. you know uh and then i lived with her till i was 16 i was on my own so how many kids were in the house just you just me and her and then my other cousins would come sometimes you know but we didn't we didn't have much yeah that made you grow up really quick yeah it's like my family lived off of my grandma's disability yeah, that that's the way we was too. You know, so everybody coming when the first and the end of the month to come mm, get some of her money yeah. to pay their bills. Did that make you mad? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, because I didn't really get much. I got one pair, maybe two pair of shoes a year, and uh, clothes. I said wear cheaper clothes. That's why I do like Walmart stuff because I was made fun of mm -hmm. because I had old ass and ones on. Or I'm wearing Walmart clothes. I used to be embarrassed to go in Walmart, and I know there's kids out there that's as embarrassed that they can't wear. What all the other kids is wearing, and an artist of my stature, being big as I am, I put on that Walmart clothes. It's all right to wear. It's okay. Yeah, I love uh, that. Also, I'm smarter because I wear it. You know, um, I'm an artist. I wear these cut-off t-shirts because I wear a t-shirt a day. I mm -hmm. sweat it out. Well, I'm gonna sweat out Balenciaga shirt that cost me fifteen hundred. Not wear it but one time. Right. When I can put this this uh, one hundred. I like shirt the on. fact you have your head on your shoulder, but have you always been like that, or something that you had to grow into? I mean, yeah, I always wanted those things, but I I had to get smart. You know, I when I got with uh, Nelly, I got you know Ali was my mentor, mm -hmm. and he would tell me all the time how you come into the game is how you got lead the game. So he's like T Rail, if you come in every day throwing money and flashing money and wearing 
wearing Gucci, you're going to have to leave. He said, when you're not wearing it, they're going to call you broke. You know, but right now you wear a Walmart. Right. Which it all makes sense. But it's just that everybody I know that comes into the game because they never had it. Mm -hmm. They have to like in their mind, okay, give me the six months to just blow it and just nah. have a good time with nah, it. No, I never so had that. I never had that because okay. my, my son got cancer early in my career mm -hmm. and I used my money to, to save his life because mm -hmm. his insurance wouldn't cover his chemo. So I didn't get to buy cars. I didn't get to buy houses. This is my first chain. Wow. This is my first Roly. I He's in remission now. You know, now. Thank God. You know, I, yeah, thank God. God thank is good all the time. So I didn't get to do those things. I didn't get mm -hmm. to do the, I didn't get the stunt. My stunt was saving my kid's life. And that's, that's the biggest flex I can ever give you. Man. How far in your, in your career did you, um, were you when you found out about him? Right when my dog came out. My dog came out. And that was my mom on fucking fire. You know, I was on fire. Yeah. And I was already touring with Boosie. I was using everything I had just to go on tour with him. Mm -hmm. So right after I did my first tour at Boosie, I had my dog going out the video. Here comes my news and my son got cancer. Wow. So luckily, thank God, I was at the point where I was getting paid shows. I didn't know about doing mixtapes and albums. I had a hot single. All I knew is I had a one track mind. I got to get money to feed, exactly. to, to take care of my kids' health. So I was doing show after show after show, and it kind of drowned my buzz out because I was doing so many cities. Mm -hmm. You know, um, then there was artists like did that kill people buzz? Yeah, when, when you, you ain't dropping when you ain't dropping constant projects. This, today's, and he's singing the same things over and yeah, over. Yeah, because I'm really trying to get out here and make some money. Oh man, because chemo's do my yeah, son. Yeah. It's hard. I can't go in a studio and think and be an artist. All I think yeah. about is <sighs> him. And I didn't have a good manager to say. Sing about what you're going through. Exact, that's what, exactly what I was Damn. thinking about. That's real. That's real. The first person or I anybody said. around you. It doesn't even always have to be yeah. your manager. There's somebody to just, you know, plug that into your tell thought people process. What you, I, I didn't tell people what I was going through when I was going through it. Mm. I was just... Because you had to deal with it by yourself? Or yeah. you, you were just that person? Yeah, I had, my manager was, he was a promoter. He didn't know how to manage. Mm -hmm. He never, he just got me a deal with Empire. And, and then he went off by himself. I basically was managing myself after, for a while. I will find random people to come on the road with me, ride with me, bro, and you play like my manager so I can do these shows. I'm from Kansas, Topeka. We don't got everything. We don't got nothing. We just got a radio station two days ago. Wow. You know what I'm saying? We don't got nothing. Uh, so, so where was your child's mom during this time? She she was keeping them. Mm -hmm. She lives in Kansas City. You together? No. Okay. No, she was keeping them, but she was dependent on me. Mm -hmm. She had, it depended on me to pay his chemotherapy. That hurt me the most that I couldn't be there with him like a doctor's appointments. Yeah, no, I get it. But I had to live out there. Like I was in my Chrysler. But you were doing what was most important, which was trying to supply. Yeah. So people always want, they call me broke. They they call me all kind of names. That, may, that diminishes an artist's look because you expect them to get big chains, jewelry, money, flashing. The normal things artists do, I didn't do. And I love that. I love that because me coming from Jamaica, when I hear you talk about even kids growing up and, you know, people wanting to have this and wanting to have that, I didn't care. I was a tomboy, so I was too busy running around on the street playing soccer and, mm -hmm. you know, beating up all the boys and doing all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I had one pair of shoes, but I didn't look at it as something bad. I'm like, we grew up, you get a pair of shoes until this one is worn out, you get another one yeah. to go back to school. But that wasn't the norm for me, unless you're just super, super rich. But you can't miss something you didn't have as long as you had something on your feet and not walking around barefooted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause you have some, kid, you see them, you see them Jordans. I didn't care about all of that. I did. I was, I wanted them 13s and 11s. <laughs> I grew up watching Mike and Kobe. You know, I wanted those shoes, but I couldn't get them. My grandma couldn't afford those shoes. Right. She couldn't afford that. Uh, not when my mama come and asking for helping her with her rent or my aunties coming to ask off of one paycheck. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't do that. So, I, I mean, I was happy. I, I lived my life. I played outside every day. Did but it I made did. you who you How are today. Were you? Huh? How, How old were you? Girl, I was... Like when you, when, you, when, when you first got into... How old was you when you had your first kid? When I had my first kid, I was 21. Okay, so... So you yeah. weren't that young. No, no. He, but see, that, that's what I'm saying because... When I was 21, man, it was bad, man. Drugs had just came out like I liked it, and mm -hmm. I was going to sell some dope and all <laughs> yeah. that. Nigga, I, your kid would have been good. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I was going to go get me some dope. Well, I was yeah. selling pills. No, like, I was, no, like, mm -hmm. we got, like, cocaine. I was doing all kinds of Keys crazy of coke, shit. and, and that was the bad, bro. man. I, I promise, when I had my child, I, was, I stopped. I wanted to beat her. I don't want to get in trouble. See, I wasn't like that. Me, I was tripping. 
Like My I was heart. gonna try to make everybody in the hood good. I went to jail one time and I was like, "Fuck." No, man. no, I went and then I I lied and said I was my brother. I was trying to figure out how to scam <laughs> that out. I'm just telling you. Yeah. Like I'm just a real. Like I was trying to take care of everybody. Yeah, the family. social and everything. I was trying to figure it out, man, because these niggas were broke. We were broke. I feel you. So I you mean, it was bad. Do. So I'm like, I gotta help these niggas. They ain't ready for this. We want to. We want to come up. Yeah. Wasn't no really rap was in the West Coast and in the East Coast. It wasn't in the South. Mm -hmm. So in, during my time, you had to go get it. Yeah. So for you to be. I, I thank God that, that you made the right decision for your kids. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I didn't. I had to go away for a second just to, you know, recoup this mindset to get back and know. That's because parenting to me means a lot. Yeah. Because my dad wasn't there. And uh, I'm going through it with him now. Like, I'm not talking to him now. You know, because uh, I feel like when he got out of prison, I was the only one. Me and my other brother was taking care of him. And he wasn't doing it. What nobody was doing for him. I was putting money on books and stuff like that. That's the inner kid in you that wants your wants your, your father, father to be there for you when he gets out. How long was he gone? He just did seven. And you you kept money on the book the whole time. I helped him out the whole time. And when he got out, he didn't do what. Hey, I, all I wanted to do was be come, there for you. Be there for me. Come spend some time with me, and let's make it about me and you. You know, let, come hear my music. Come ask me about how, why I made this record. Be my father. Come to a show. How long now has he been out? Oh, he been out about two years now. Nigga still ain't been to a show. Nah, man, I ain't playing that. So I'm, I I want to be a better dad than the dad I had. I want to be a better dad than the mother I had. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question, though, because as I got older, I, I realized this, and, um, and I saw a lot of people, too. But have you ever asked him, like, or found out how was he raised, like, the certain things that how he, he was treated because he might not know better than who he is you understand it, what it, i mean i mean his mom my grandma mm -hmm. she was an amazing grandma really oh, so that, that was your that dad's was mom okay that you were with no my, I, i'm talking about his mom yeah i used to go to his her house every other weekend oh, okay and i used to go be with her on weekends she was amazing all her other kids <laughs> he was just in the streets it was just him yeah he's just in the streets my uncle is an amazing uncle. You know, I have an uncle. He helped raise me growing up. We mm. threw party. We threw parties when I was in high school. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying we used to turn it up. We used to throw big parties in the in the South Side of Topeka. That's how I got into doing like entertainment, doing parties and clubs. Was because yeah. of him. My uncle. He had a house across the street. He had his house right here, and he used to have an empty house. He let me and my brother John throw and uh, throw parties in it. Mm. We used to charge and, and, and we fill it up every weekend. Is that oh, the wow. brother that, that passed away? Or is that no, that's my brother here right now. Okay, like, that, like, that's your brother. Care. Okay, I ain't even see him over. He quiet. He yeah. ain't like you. <laughs> no, nah, he's down here. That nigga quiet. <laughs> he supported me, bro, because when, I, when we, I supported him in high school, like he was a track runner. Yeah. Mm. What can run fast. And I, and I, I wasn't how fast. Give fast. me a time, nigga. I need a time. Don't never say fast on here. What you run 100 in, John? Uh, 10.2 seconds. That's pretty fast. In the high school? <laughs> high school. That's that's fast. My boy ran that too. Uh, that Blanton boy. I know these boys can run, y'all. Yeah, I wish I'd have caught you out there in my day. In my <laughs> we was so we was so broke. My my fat ass went out for field just so I can go watch him run. That's good, man. I'm like I can't afford to get to the thing, so let me go off the field so I can ride the bus with y'all. Wow. I know I couldn't throw that disc. I, didn't, I had no interest in throwing that <laughs> shit. I want to go watch my brother Aww. run and cheer him that's on. That's dope, man. That's cool. So be, <laughs> improvise. I love yeah. that. I love I love the support that you give. I love all of that. Um, so let me ask you a question. Police trying to come in and say hi to y'all. Oh, they, I like law enforcement. <laughs> They're law enforcement. They're my people, man. <laughs> yeah. No, but no. you, oh, you know, I'm one thing ahead. I can say is, man, um, being that, I, you know, I used to be in, don't thank you by yourself. I know where you're in Topeka. I was up there in Fort Riley. At Ogden. I, love Fort Riley. I was in Ogden. Y'all been to Junction, Junction City party? <laughs> I didn't, I was young, but I'm just saying, it was cold up there for me. It's cold. Damn, it's yeah, cold. Y'all don't get as much snow, snow here in Dallas, do y'all? No. We had we had terrible snowstorm like two times and it was like all the buildings got shut down, every pipes got busted. We just didn't know how to handle the last one that came along. But yeah, the kids yeah. loved it because they've never seen that much snow in their life. I love snow. Yeah. I mean, I the, love it. I just the, hate the cold. I don't, I don't like the snow like that. Y'all tripping, man. I take this heat for that I snow. Ain't gonna lie, you like the snow better than the heat. I hate being hot. Man, hell no. That snow cold, bro. When you get out there and it's cold. When I went up to Chicago, that ice was that thick one time. I was like, hell no. I never the only enjoyment of, of being 12 years old, building a snowman, snowman. Mm. and tackling them. Boom! 
That's what we used to do man. with kids. You know what I'm doing? Tackle the snowman, but that's fun. That's different. After you spend all that time building it, you gonna knock it down. We used to build a football team the snowman and tackle them. Nuh-uh. I'm talking about knock their heads off. Man. I mean, we didn't put the carrots in the, in the, in the <laughs> and all that. We build them up three. And just enough. Just knock them down. That's, that's boys. I'm glad I got you in there. I want to ask you about this Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City. What is the difference and why y'all be tripping like it's so, so big of a deal? I hate that. It's because it's like. I, I mess with everybody from Kansas and Kansas City, Missouri. It's the area. It's right across the bridge. Oh, yeah? You got Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. It so, ain't no real beef, though, is it? Not no real beef. It's just who, where it's, it's just from. Fun. It's just fun. It's like, y'all, you from Missouri, you from Kansas. Y'all tripping. You know, Tech Nine is technically from uh, Missouri. Missouri. I'm from Kansas. <laughs> so they be like, who the biggest rapper from Kansas? I'm like, me. Of course, yeah. Because <laughs> Tech Nine from Kansas City, Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? Um, I had uh, Lust and Hustle. I had a few of those guys on here from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, you know, Big Court from uh, from there, Master P, best friend. He from, from Kansas, City, Missouri. Yeah, and so, uh, well, see, they got they got a lot we, of rappers, and they say we can't rep the Chiefs because they're in the Missouri side. That's what they say. We can't rep the Royals because they're in the camp. Well, we got we got a soccer team in Kansas. Hey, Missouri. that you that look, she's smiling mm-hmm. like hell, boy. That's, that's the football team we call. We call <laughs> that it ain't no damn real football. Yeah, we got sporting KC. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So, man, you know uh, when when you think about your music, oh. Yeah, she's looking to, at <laughs> she's looking at me like I got a question. I'm gonna stop right there. No, I wanted to go back because I want to know because you you didn't mention. Um, so when did you find out you could sing? When yeah. did you start singing? Like I was, I was four years old. My mama can blow. I used to watch my mama sing Mary J. Blige. She was in a band. My mom used to tour like I do. She really? Was, she was in a full band called the Office Band. Okay. And um, I used to watch her sing. And I used, then I remember when Lion King came out. Well, I seen that Kuna Matata. Mm. I yeah. just sang the shit out there. And I used, to, I used to sing, get some money, and run to the, the candy lady over, go get like, she like the freeze pop things. She'll put the Kool Aid in the cup, freeze it, and you push them out like that. Mm-hmm, Turn them upside down and mm-hmm. suck the bottom of it, suck it dry. Oh, that shit crazy. <laughs> I, used be, I used to be like, we ain't away, oh, we ain't away. I used to be like, sing my ass. <laughs> Give me them dollars, I'm running over her. Man, wow. that's dope. But when did you start taking it seriously? Uh, probably like after high school. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I used to write. I was scared to like come out and just sing it at first. I would just write, write, write every day. Write, so you write, never write. sing at choir at school or nothing like that? No. Nah. I, I threw parties, man. I was trying to, yeah. trying trying to get, get that, that money. money. Yeah, I was throwing parties getting bread. You yeah. Know? I was but I used to write every day. Mm-hmm. Right. And then that's why it's easy now. I can go to the studio. They be like, you don't need no I don't need nothing. Just put me in the booth. Play the music. Because mm. I'm I write in my head now. But you have to hear yeah. the beat first. Yeah, let me hear the beat. That's why when I do features, I hate when they send me the beat. Uh, and like want me to listen to it. Like, here, listen to it real quick. No, nah, bro. Because in my mind, you got to play it right when you want me to do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Because once I hear it, I'm going to want to jump on it and I'm going to forget. Mm. Yeah. You you want that first response from me. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. if you get that second, it ain't going to be what I gave you that first. You could have gave you on that first. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, that no. That makes I, sense. Yeah, you know, it make a lot of sense when you know the process, mm-hmm. and then you get better at it with time because this guy, you season now. Oh, it's oh. up now. Oh, I oh these niggas in trouble now. It's over with. Oh, don't play when you come in there now. These niggas better know they got that. And you trying to take them out? It's up. Whoever it is going whoever, in there with you, whoever it's over with. You better go in that thing. But that's why they don't want to jump on songs with me. They scared. I send send songs with people that scared. They want to jump on songs with me. <laughs> that ain't the same. How, how did you? How did you and Derez Deshaun meet and link up? Well, Derez ain't scared. Derez, I know it, but I just brought him up because I, I I interviewed him and I think I brought you up mm-hmm. during that interview. So it's like, how did y'all even meet? I wrote him online a lot. I okay. would, I badger you. If you're an artist, I write you a thousand times. Like when I just when I just seen Moray in L.A., I said, "Why you running from me? You already been hitting him up. I've been hitting him up, and then he he walked in the party. I was like." Oh, Perfect chance. I seen oh, that. Dog, you, I walk, you can ask anybody here. I walked to. I said, "Why you been running from me?" You don't care. It don't matter who the person is. You still gonna walk up to them. Yeah, like, what you, what I like say? <laughs> he said, "I ain't been running from you, man. Uh, you fuck with me." I said, "I fuck with you." But why are you running? Like, let's, let's get on this record. You had already been DMing him. Yeah, let's get. You know me, bro. These artists know who I am. You know me. I know you. Why we Why we playing this game? Let's get some money. And what did he say? It ain't like I ain't popping. Mm-hmm. It ain't like I don't do numbers. It, what, what is it? And what, what did he say? Same thing I told Young Blue before. What did Young Blue say? Oh, we got in that studio, did records. Yeah, that, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta be right. You know, I see some of these people, it's an ego trip. I'm not, I don't have an ego. We gonna do this, we gonna work. We gonna work. So has anybody ever reached out to you and be, um, 
numerous amount of times and you did the same thing to them? Not no artists, uh, not no artists, we right, we right here. Oh, okay. And ask anybody, I do more features than anybody. I did $300,000 worth of features last year. What's up? Damn. I'm working do with you. Do you think that's bad or good? It's both. It's bad because I'm not as, as exclusive, right. but it's good because I'm getting that money. Damn right. The day, I didn't do this to be famous. I did this to take care of my family and get some money. Mm -hmm. 100. And so... Basically, I learned the game from Boosie. But, but, and I'm gonna get to that, but when you met Derez Deshaun, did y'all, y'all have y'all done something together? Y'all hadn't done nothing together? No, we never done nothing. I used to ride him all the time, and he was like, yeah, we can do something. Then I said, you know what? I'm coming to Atlanta. I just went to Atlanta. You done moved to Atlanta, right? Yeah, ended up moving to Atlanta. We and Derez got real cool. Derez, me and him, like a brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's my boy. That's my dog. You know, I, I really rock with Derez. He a good dude. Yeah. He He's talented. Crazy on the verse. I'm, I'm talking about boy can crazy. spit. Boy, I'm in the studio. I'm like, oh, I gotta come with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, oh, let me drink this drink. <laughs> Cause he be in there gassing. And I'm a hook dude. You know, I'm yeah. really good at hooks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right. He made me get better at verse. That's yeah. Good. Doing verse. We 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 hand in hand with each other. Just like I make him get better at hooks. You have to have people around you who are gonna challenge you at all times yeah. because it's the only way you get better. Every yeah. party, every person I done work with, like three made me get better at singing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you figure, you gonna figure out what you got to take from this situation to get yourself better. Yeah, but when you, cause Shaw, PGF Shout is uh, my that's my guy right there. He the one link me with the real. They they be working. Mm -hmm. they, they good friends too. And uh, I always when I went down there, man, I, I told him the other day I'm gonna bring him down here. I'm gonna bring. I gotta get him back here. I said, man, you ain't been in my stu my place. You gotta come to my place. Yeah, you know, cause I went to Atlanta and did it at their place. I'm like, oh no, I need you in Dallas. Cause Dallas be wanting to see y'all. You know how much love we have for y'all, man. Dallas. Man, so, so when you, what, what made you love on, Dallas? Really? What made you love it what though? Just break it? that down. I've been coming to Dallas for years. Dallas, I, and I used to book all y'all artists. Oh, you used to book everybody? Before I started the music, I was a promoter. I told you I started parties, then I went in the clubs. Right. I used to book so Chili Prince Rick. Yeah. Wow. I used to book uh, Party Boys. I oh, yeah? Book, I used to book GS Boys. And Young you Nation met, was you my met Rain. Partners. You met Rain during that time? I didn't know Rain. No, really? Because that's what he that's used to what do what he all done. the time. I was so cool, I get cool with the artists. Mm. See, Kansas City would bring the artists out to Kansas City, and we used to do these meet and greets. That's how I met uh, Trilly Prince Rick. Okay. That's how I met... Uh, that's how I met everybody. And yeah. then I was real cool with DJ Merck. Okay. With, with Young Nation. They were my boys at Fooley and B Reed. I used to be with them all the time. Damn. So, so I used to come to Dallas the, all the were time. Were you the type of promoter back then who used to just go straight through the artists or did you actually I'm go straight to the, the artist. You see, that's when Rain came on and he did an interview, he used to do that, but he said that's why a lot of people used to call him janky because he never would go through the management or the promoters or anybody else, and it felt like they were he was cutting them out. But I was an artist as well, promoting. Sense. Mm -hmm. So I sing, so it's an artist connection. Oh, okay. And then it's another artist to an artist. Hey, bro, you want to come rock with me? I heard. So it's different. Yeah. yeah, but you can't ask any of them. You you come through Kansas, you rocking with T-Rail. Mm -hmm. You want Kansas. You want Missouri. You want you want uh you want all those those Midwest states. Ask Rainwater who the Midwest is, who they who they go through. First person bring mode three to Kansas is me. Wow. I booked them myself. But wow. I, I want to ask you about did you meet Boosie here in Dallas? Cause he used to come to Dallas a lot. I met Boosie in Kansas. You met him in Kansas. He you brought him to Kansas. Yeah, my uh, manager did. Your manager time. did. Okay. He booked oh. him for Kansas City and Wichita. That's why we do a book in Kansas City. We book in Wichita. Hmm. If I didn't get to through to Boosie in Kansas City. Got him in Wichita. <laughs> I got him in Wichita. Got him in Wichita. I got two chances to talk to you. Boosie came to Kansas right when he got out of prison. My dog came out right when he got out of prison. Boosie's one of my favorite rappers. I said, I got to get him on this song. I didn't get the song until Nebraska. I got the song in Omaha, Nebraska. My, my dog, we won 10 bands at the casino. And he gave it to me. That's the dope part. I heard you say that on another interview. And the crazy part is, is Boosie's so fired up and wild. That's him, me and him on that picture there. Like he, when he first came on, I, I, we met him. Mm -hmm. it, he was doing Jewel House, his clothing brand. Mm -hmm. And and I, I'm a I'm a clothes dude. I've been doing this a long time, a lot of stores. And I was like, man, I'm going to mess with this Jewel House. But he dealt with this white boy named Mike Wagman. And I didn't like Mike Wagman. We know each other in this clothes thing. I've been had these, I know these people. And I was like, Boosie, man, I'm like, man, I'm going to rock with you, man. I said, but I'm, I'm with a cool, you know, it's like Ralph, all these black, my black brothers, we all over there. Yeah. And he was like, I'm going to be bigger than this. I'm going to be bigger than it, cool. I'm going to be bigger than that. I said, 
in my mind, I was like, nah, with that white boy, like Mike Wagman is not the one. He used to be good with Rock, Nate, Rock, Rock Aware. He mm -hmm. was good during that. T he made a lot of people a lot of money. But when it came down to uh, these new waves, the new wa the new stuff, I just didn't see it. It just the time changed with these clothes so much. I'm well, like, just like everything else. Yeah, time changed. Let's be in business time like changed. this. And it, it also comes ab come back come around. around again. I'm gonna tell you something. You something else with? I ain't even gonna go into the fact of them all the way you bring them songs back, man. You a beast. <laughs> you a dog, nigga. Yeah. You good? What? Yeah, I love doing that. Nigga, when he bring them old songs back, man, I be happy as hell. That's that's called. I, I done heard them too, nigga. Empire get on my ass about that. They don't. What they don't like you doing it? They, it's they, we be fighting for clearance. You gotta get clearance. We be fighting for clearance, and I be so I be so pissed. I be like, bro, if they just hear just four of these records. You see what they doing with this? Uh, the, the I thing, oh, I can't wait. I'm gonna have you blow that one over here. Want, I <laughs> want a lot of these songs to come back because you know R and B has changed. I'm an R and B person. I love R and B, but it's like R and B is like almost non-existent. It's like this new wave of singing has changed, but they're not calling it R and B. They're calling you know. So I got a I got a theory with R and B. Why I suffering a little bit? Why? All the OGs of rap mm -hmm. are still rapping. Yeah. All the OGs of R and B are trying to fit in with new R and B. Yeah. Think if Usher just dropped the old style Usher record. Think if Tank dropped the old style Tank record. They're going away from what? Their original fans. You got a, millions of fans over here that made you platinum. But you want to go over here to make these records. I agree with that, Ken. I, I see where you're coming from. If but they're Jamie, trying to stay relevant. It, they're trying to get a newer crowd. That's what they're trying to do. I know we don't like who we, we don't like we don't like this name, but R. Kelly stayed relevant, staying in his style. And but he, he Who went, don't like the name? A lot of people don't like it. Well, they I'm don't like what he did, but they like can't he deny his but, talent. But I'm, I'm staying there. Let's go. go. Yeah, go. Keep on going. I'm staying huh? like if Avant came out right now and gave you Avant and mm -hmm. didn't give you two chains, you know what I'm saying? Why everything got to be so fast? The only people that can do slow R&B is women. Mm. And they're keeping it genuine the same. But yeah. men got to be singing fast or they ain't going to get played. No, nah, that's real. That's real. I'm, I, I'm just telling you, though. Know, and I'm fighting the uphill I, battle. Keep I it slow. Love, yeah, you, what you I love doing? It so. I love it. If a nigga can't relate to that like R&B, they crazy. Nigga, I can fix all that the way I need it to be. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's too many people trying to make something. Something can change and be new and still good. You know, I don't have to have it just like it was, to be honest with you. I'm cool with it as long as what, it comes. What I do is I mix it, the old sound, with new lingo and faster talk. That's right. But I still keep my beat slow. I still, yeah. I still like that. I still like the groove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're young, and I love that. Yeah, I love the groove. No, you love the groove. So, I'm, you know, so when you in, when you when you gave uh, Boosie the money, um, basically he, yeah, he was down with it. Straight up. He said, you know, I'm a hustler. Come on, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. Give me the address. He told everybody, follow me. He didn't care what, Boosie is not like, no, that's why I, I kind of got his attitude. I learned from being around him so much. He's not like all oh, the celebrities where he's scared, lean back. Let's do it. He went to the basement studio with me and rocked it out. He was like, give me a cigarette. Nobody had no cigarette. One person had one cigarette. I paid $50 for that cigarette. Mm. Give this man a cigarette so he can write this verse. He wrote the verse and knocked it out. Boosie's cool. Man. I learned. That's why I go any damn near, damn near any place to go knock verses out. Let's do it. What you want to do? Yeah. Boosie, Boosie have a, a like a... He, Those artists he, is bougie. No, this nigga right here is slick. Yeah. You know, Boosie ain't bougie. He no, he ain't. Because yeah. he deal with my partner, Sir Charles Jones. See, that's Southern Soul. And I know they deal because he had that bir that birthday bash with him every time. Mm -hmm. And he deal with uh, Bad News be there too. Bad News, is these are, these are Southern Soul artists. They not, okay. but they booked every week. They ain't getting the same money. They doing their thing, but it's just a different, you know, different Genre. way. Yeah. Different way, but them boys doing their thing. They go to air every week. I can call. They, they, they go on trail shit. rides. And, they and go to and trail rides. They go ride. everywhere. Okay. They get in their bag. Hey, that's what but the game is about. at the end of the day, it's a different type of music, but it's, they doing what you said. They sticking to, they staying true to who they who they are. Who they are. But then a lot of R and B. Um, I've heard some R and B um, singers who said they're actually trying to cross over into that um, soul. southern soul. Southern soul is what they call it now because they're trying to stay relevant. Because they're going to all the trail rides, and that's what's every, it's all over the South. Trail yeah, it's rides. in the South, man. Have, yeah, I'm getting booked pretty good now. See, have you done <laughs> trail rides? I, done, I, I think we just did one in, in uh, Mississippi. Y'all did one? They what do you think about it? Was it was me and like, it was some older bands. Yeah. They was, they was going in. <laughs> they be, they I be headline high. though, they, they, I killed it though. Did you? Oh, come on, I'm going out there going crazy. I can imagine. Mississippi? 
Man, I like Mississippi. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm a rider. I, be I love Mississippi. Yeah, <laughs> Mississippi. Mississippi like, first state there ever like take me in. I yeah. did 16 cities. Wow. I love Mississippi. They they book you. They love you. They love you. Yeah. So when you get when you get like super super big, because I know you're gonna get super super big. Okay. You say you're going all the way. You're going all the way. So you talking about Michael Jackson type nigga? Yeah. Oh, dang. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you going to be a Michael Jackson type nigga. You got but some work, boy. Because, because of who you are and how humble you are and um, your ethics. That's the reason why I see you going, you know, where you need to go. Because you're not letting a lot of stuff get to your head. But um, when you get up there, are you going to still always charge for features? Um, no, I'm going to start reaching down. Yeah, you see, once you get so much, what it, you see, I, I understand what you're asking. And too. the reason why I asked that question, because I was reading an article with Jay-Z, he was talking to Kevin Hart, and he said he's never, ever charged for a feature, ever. But he's very selective of who he does the features with. Yeah, he doesn't do many. But that, what that does is make you more exclusive. Damn right. It makes you more exclusive, like, they can't hear your voice as much. So people, it's, the game is about being discovered. So a person that doesn't do a lot of features, you want more of it. Yeah. So Jay-Z come out with a song right now, and he probably ain't dropped in a year or two. He gonna go crazy. He gonna go crazy because you ain't heard him in so long. Yeah. But he said the reason why he does that is because he looks at how he can network with the person. He's not really looking at um, monetarily. He's looking at, because but networking is what gets relationship. Building relationship, that's really what he's looking at yeah. more but, than but anything in else. In the new age, I mean, people in that bag. Yeah. Jay-Z's getting different type of money. Yeah. Jay-Z's yeah. not just making music. He ain't by himself either. That's that's the same thing Andre 3000 do. Mm -hmm. He the same way. Yeah, he ain't gonna just jump on no anybody. Andre nothing. 3000 also an actor. <laughs> you know, right? He's, he's part of a legendary group called Outkast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That made great money and still streams very well. Very well. You know, um, you can't uh, ask somebody, ask Jay-Z what he was doing when he was, well, he's still a hustler, when he's just first coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, he had to. What well, made me do a lot of features? When I heard Boosie say he made eight hundred thousand in a year. I said, oh, I like that, <laughs> man. Like I said, nothing I'd rather do than make eight hundred thousand dollars in a year. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. You gotta listen. Whatever to you mind. feel is for your brand is what right. you have to do. Yeah, because me, have, I've always been for the people. People. Yeah, I'm for helping because I'm always preaching that they don't want to do songs with me. Yeah, they don't want to help me out. They don't want to pull me in. So I'm gonna pull people in. I was told by Boosie's security guard, he said, you got to be let in this game. Somebody got to let you in. I'm letting everybody, come on in. There's money. You might get a million fans that I can't get. But check this out. ASCAP and BMI is real, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. If I did 100 features this year and they all attached their ASCAP and BMI and they all put three, $400 into my ASCAP and BMI from their royalties, how much money am I really making in a year? Yeah. Four checks a four checks a year to compare to a nigga who ain't doing it. Exactly. So you can laugh all you want about these features. I'm getting paid for the feature. I'm also getting ass cap and BMI. Mm -hmm. Of 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 more people. It's that that quantity adds up once you do a lot of them. Mm-hmm. You're creating generational wealth as will you, well. Will you ever bring anybody, like, you, do you have anybody that's coming up under you that you're trying to help to understand the business? I'm working on a few artists. They ain't boot camp. Yeah, no, no, you got to keep them before there. I even, I, before I even put a name, name out there. Name out there makes sense. You got to pass the test with me first, you know, yeah. I, because I, I haven't pushed the artists yet. And I got the power to push the artists. And will you sign them to you? Yeah, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm with Empire, so they can, I, Just I, put them up. I'll put them out through Empire with me, and, and then we'll push them out. When you with a label, can you also create a, a label for yourself? When I, right now, I'm with Empire. I have Winners Only. Winners Only is my label. Yeah. Okay. And I can sign them to Winners Only through Empire. They'll get national distribution. Okay. I can get them advances and stuff like that and stuff like that. No. Um, but I'm not just going to do it for anybody. I want to see you work. You, you, you got to be hungry. You hear crazy mm -hmm. stories about artists on Empire. Mm -hmm. That the, the 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 Mo threes and the Dolphs and all that stuff and the tragic things that happen. How much do that? Do you ever think about the things that go on around these artists? I just feel like it's the artist. The label can't control the art. Imp I'm with Empire six years. Okay. They, they don't tell me what to do. They don't tell me to say something. They don't. They just distribute my music. Mm -hmm. They don't. All these other artists that came out, the Mo threes and the Young Dolphs. They don't control them. 
That's their life situations that they go through. Mm-hmm. Empire's a good company. Gazi and Ema are great people. I feel like uh, whenever I need them, they, 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 they do what I need them to do. Yeah. But they're not controlling my life. They're not telling me, hey, go, go be for Boss Talk Radio. You have life choices in life. I believe that. No, I agree. The Bible states you got life choices. You oh, got choices. Sure. What you choose to do is your choice. Mm-hmm. You got to own up to your choices in life. That's what you what you reap is what you sow. Yeah. You make the bed, lay in it. You ever heard all those terms like that? I've heard them, man. So I, I ain't old because you can tell his grandma raised him. See, mm-hmm. see, see, young folks don't talk like that. Yeah. They need to be talking like that, but that's a grandma statement. Yeah. All them, all them catchisms that you keep throwing out there. Yeah. Them old folk statements. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Grandma yeah. out of my ass. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Grandma. Oh, you decided to <laughs> do that. Now yeah. Take this ass. Yeah. Away. Yeah. Yeah. They mm-hmm. don't play. Grandma will whoop you. For every yeah. action, there is a reaction. Con- exactly. Yeah. Grandma will whoop you exactly. just for getting some sugar out the top of that <laughs> shelf. She me? told you don't go up there and get it. I told you, ass, don't do that. Why you go up there? I you think you. it's over? She said, "Just go back there and think about it." She gonna whoop you too. She gonna wait a little bit though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's gonna make you think about it. You my, scared my, as hell. My worst was yeah. wait till we get home. That's- <laughs> I'm like, can you just do it now? Uh-huh. It's gonna kill me waiting till I get mm-hmm. home. That fear, that fear. I'm telling well, you, in front of your friends, so it ain't that bad. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we knew, right? <laughs> ah! Man, we'll be in front of your friends, so it ain't that it don't bad. Be that bad. So, mm-hmm. you got something else you wanna ask? I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna put that song on. I know you before you get because I gotta get Money Mo's over here. Yes. Um, okay. So I want to go back to your son a bit. So because I know there's so many people out here who are dealing with their children going through, uh, you know, chemo, cancer, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, man, that's him. And I wanted to know um, how long did how long was he going through that before he went into remission? Um, I say about three years. Three years. Four years. Four years. During that time, what was your most detrimental time or hardening time that you had to deal with, and how did you overcome that? Probably the first year, because my son also has Down syndrome, mm. so he's born with disability. And I've always thought, I'm like, why him? I, I beat myself up a lot. I'm more. Than, I'm like, why him? Why? Why my son got get Down syndrome, cancer? But I. Don't, I already, uh, it's okay to question God. Yeah. I can ask him why. Uh, but my son made, that also made me stronger because his smile, the Down syndrome. I don't know what it is about kids with Down syndrome. They're beautiful people. They are. They're, They're strong are. individuals. My son is stronger Very than loving. I've ever been in my life. Very he takes loving. every downfall with a smile, always smiling. So if he's smiling, I gotta smile. I can't show him. I know punk. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, but that was a very tough time for me. Anything that happens to him, I get upset. Like, why? 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 <sighs> it's tough. Man. So when you heard of him getting cancer, that made it even worse. Yeah, it made it worse. So I'm, I'm sitting there like, mm, I gotta hustle. But for that first year, you had to take your mind off of the situation mm-hmm. to be able to overcome it? Yeah. Or how did you? It's, it just felt like the first time they told me that my son got Down syndrome. It hurt. When did you know? It was when he was born. You know, when you're pregnant, they do a test. Right. They pre-test you. They told us that he didn't have it. Wow. The day after he was born, the doctor comes in and takes him. And they like, oh, he has Down syndrome. Oh. oh. You know, being your first child, young, right. your first boy. You know, I got big plans for my son. He's going to be an NBA player. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's going to be the next Kobe Bryant. You know, and then yeah, Down syndrome. Now wow. you got to study it and figure out what this is and how, how you deal with it and how you make his it. life better. Because people don't never know anything about it until it affects you directly. Then the first thing they do is bring you a paper for for disability check. Oh, I don't care about no money. <laughs> you know, my son just got told about my son got Down syndrome. We might need. We get some money now. Every that's not no plus for my son. Get money is not a plus. They shouldn't uh, be saying that. For get right. Well, you, not a plus for my son getting Down syndrome. But Jordan's the biggest thing that ever happened in my life. I love my son Jordan. I got him his own TV Jordan. show. Shout out to well, Jordan. What's the TV man. show called? Best Buddies. It airs September twenty first. Awesome. I got twelve percent of a TV network now. It's called SM One TV. Is every, that where it's coming out? Yeah, every TV. It's on Roku. 
Every 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 TV producer told me no because I didn't have enough drama in my TV show. I said, you know what? You're going to regret that. And now I own 12% of a TV network called SM1 TV that's going to be on Roku. And my son's TV show is going to air September awesome. 21st. He's going to get four checks a year because of his that's daddy dope. putting that work in. I grinded for him. And you opening doors for other kids. Yes. Because kids with disabilities are beautiful. I just, I just spent the last two weeks with my manager's son. Shout out Corday. He has autism and he's a beautiful kid yeah i i have a big heart for kids period mm -hmm. that's why i do a lot of give backs to kids i get 500 shoes here i do uh feed the community big barbecues that's why the city of topeka gave me my own day my own mm -hmm. proclamation that's dope. So you, you, awesome. you know what, what day is that may 22nd it's t-rail day in topeka kansas may 22nd I, remember that so we gotta come down there come on come pull up yes, come on we gonna pull up so they do a big festival every year the last year this year i gave away 500 shoes i fit uh I fed 3,000 people out of my own pocket. I don't ask for no sponsorships. I don't ask for nobody to help me. You don't have people that's automatically trying to reach out to say, how can they help? Yep. Some people ask, but they don't know. They just want to act volunteer. But this is out of my own pocket. I do it. Man, I want the kids to be, and it's the best experience I've ever had. Because when I first wow. found out about Down syndrome, I, I started looking into it and I'm like, there are a lot of talented kids with Down syndrome, yes, piano definitely. players. I mean, it's just that they had to figure out how to focus on that certain thing. It's usually certain things that they can do, but they can excel. They're way better at it than anybody else because mm -hmm. of how they Focusing process. Focusing on it, yeah. Process. Process. You ever looked at a child, a just regular child, mm -hmm. and they're like living carefree? Mm -hmm. Picture living carefree for your whole life. Picture yeah. living carefree. My son is about to be 13 and he don't have a care, care in, in the, the world. world. And it's going to be that way when he's 30. Yeah, yeah. Because that mindset you have is so youthful. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely youthful. It's Man. so youthful. I love it. Love it. But Go. one more thing I was going to say, but I realized, you know, when you, when you say you question God and stuff like that, and this is something I learned as I got older, because I learned so much as you get older, is that everything, no matter what it is, happens for a reason. And mm -hmm. it's not always for the person that is going, that is, that is going through it. It's for the people around them. Yeah. So just like how you said, it's because of him why you're stronger. It's because of him why you are the way how you are. Yeah. So a lot, if that didn't happen, you probably wouldn't be the person that you are today. Yeah, maybe, I would need, maybe I needed those battles. You see Man. what I mean? So when people go through things, it's always for somebody around. You might not know who it is for. And just like a TV show that you said you now created where now the world can see him. Mm -hmm. He'll help so it. many more That's other right. people. Yeah. people Best Buddies your is story. about a, a, a father raising a child with disabilities. Yeah. Showing the ups and downs. Exactly. It's going to help somebody. And a lot of parents are into that show. I told him a lot of parents would be into this show. People are going to see that. And you're going to help. You're going to have so many people reaching out to you and say, telling you thank you. Yeah, you know, sometimes, I ain't going to lie to y'all, sometimes I feel people feel T rail more than they feel my music. No, no, real. That's real. I'm I more, just told you that when we started. That. I'm more of a personality than an artist sometimes. No, that's But that's real. why you got to do this because it's everybody... It's because of the joy. The joy that you show and display yeah. on your, your character, on your... on your, uh, your artistry is there and it's dope. Don't get me twisted, but you're a good dude. I knew that. That was made... That's what made, drew me to T-Rail. People yeah. got to fall in love with you before they fall in love with your work. Yeah. That's really... People love my music. I'm saying people love my music. Music go hard. I just feel... Man. There's people that... I see... I read comments. They're like, bro, I didn't even know one of your songs. That's right. But I love you. Yeah. I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank Do you. you respond to all of your... I try to. It it's easy. hard because I got a lot of followers. Damn right. <laughs> uh, but I try. That's good. Yeah, you ask my bus driver. He tell you I take pictures of everybody. Like, That's you, awesome. It, I got... Yeah, no, I got to get into the, the to Go the ahead. to this tank uh, thing that I seen when y'all got to singing and yeah, I want to hear that. It song. was you singing. Tank, you was tank didn't want no smoke with me. Man, I seen it. Tank, I met him. You remember we was at Dreads? Yeah, we was at Dreads. I seen nigga. We was in VIP together. But he real cool. He, he came real laid back beside dude. me. Yeah, watch out now. <laughs> he All these niggas gonna have to uh -huh. back up now. Here we go. <laughs> you know, man, he ain't like that. You know, no, I, my other not. sister was sitting beside him, acting like she didn't know who he was. It was hilarious. I that was to funny get that to night. me. She tried to play him like, I don't know you, nigga. But she really was liking the nigga. But I was mm -hmm. laughing. She's like, I said, what you doing? I don't know who this is. I'm like, if you don't get your butt up, that mm -hmm. nigga don't want you. You know how many women that nigga? He, I think he's about to get married during mm -hmm. during that time. Tank cool. Cool as hell. So what happened? I beefed with him. You um, beef with him? I, I, I said, I made a video one day. I I sang LO3 at a, uh, at this vlog in New York. Okay. And uh, it was where they, they really test your vocals. 
And then I posted it up like, hey, none of you R&B niggas out sing me. Y'all may have more songs than me, but y'all can't out sing me. Then he got on there. He said, hold on, brother. I don't retire till next year. <laughs> and I was like, you can get the smoke too. Like, you don't want this. Then he was like, so when I went to his house like a couple weeks ago, he was like, when you said that, he was like, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. You know what I'm saying? So I got to go in at him. So basically it just turned into me and him doing a record together. And then now me and him about to do a a joint deal together. We're going to do an R&B label together. That's dope. I love it. See how God opened doors, man. Yeah. I love it, man. Seeing brothers get together like that. Yes. They lying. They say we can't get together and make something. They crazy. Nigga. We mm. do this. It's very rare to find a tank. A person that'll let you redo his biggest, one of his biggest records, mm -hmm. and co-sign it, push he it. He co-signed it. Shoot videos with you. I got another song I'm about to come out, a video and everything. Stay. He stayed an extra day in Atlanta to help me do the video and everything. It's Did you cool. choose that song? I deserve. Yeah. Did you choose? That? Yeah, I was That's drunk. I was drunk in Atlanta. One of them drunk nights. That's why I love Atlanta because I get some the vibe. I go to the club, see all the women. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Then I go yeah. to the studio. It, yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, they got the strip club. It's going just so crazy. easy to get a vibe in the A. Yeah. So uh, that's why I, that's another reason I bought a condo in Atlanta. I was like, I gotta live here because <laughs> the creative here. juices keep flowing. Though. Yeah, that, yeah, make you push. I, I notice like when I'm in Kansas, I make depressed music. When I'm in Atlanta, I'm up. Mm -hmm. It's just total different balance of my personality. So it depends on the type of year and what you want to write is where you need to go. Yeah. So if I and also Kansas helps me think because it's so boring so at times. <laughs> And Atlanta's just more like really fast paced. Yeah. I, it's yeah. something to do every day. Let me get this song. You want to play this Yeah, song? I, want, I want to hear this song. I got the instrument. Will, will, you, will you? A little bit of it. I'll do a little bit for y'all. Let me turn that down. Let's turn it down a little bit. Right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Big Red, look. <laughs> there you go. I don't feel like you love me. Don't feel like you care. Only pay attention when I'm with a bitch. You think I'm a hoe? It really ain't fair to me. And you downplay the good shit I do. I really pay the rent and a car note. You complain and you bitch how your heart broke. But don't complain when a nigga pay that car note. They put this dick in your mouth and get a hard dose. I deserve this back rub. Get this neck licked and me and you plus a bad bitch. Hey, I deserve man, me man. some pe <laughs> You came up with all the words to that song. Boy, that don't go on. Yeah, man. Yeah. Say, man, man, boy, you, you flipped that out on tape. Yeah. Yeah, you went a different way with yeah, it. He was talking about he deserved oh, you to get cheated it, on. Yeah, you flipped that whole. Oh, oh that's the way it should have been done. First, you tell that nigga I said that when you talk to him. Too. <laughs> he said you should. That, he he revamped your song in the right way. That's what he was thinking. Yeah, because that's exactly where I was at with it, even back then. What about what the fe it? what about the fellas that do everything that they? they, they no nah, man, no nah, like man, you, did, you did it right, man. Because when he first let me hear the song. First thing I started doing was cracking up laughing for the first time I did. <laughs> my boy, you I was did like, oh my know. God. I'm like, okay, I hear it. <laughs> I'm getting messages from women like, hey, you about to get buddy hurt. <laughs> He in the front scene, he in the front seat singing this song a little too hard. Oh man, that'll go hard, man. I knew it was a hit when I heard it, when y'all heard you do it just that yeah. little bit. I was like, oh, that's it right there. That's what I've been thinking. This is what's supposed to go down when you when you're doing everything right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you doing when you doing your job, I didn't make this for the bum dude. I made it for dudes doing their job. Man, you, know you hear that? That's me. I'm standing there like this in line waiting to go with my turn. <laughs> yeah, I'm that yeah. guy. Yeah, this ain't what? for what did Tank say when he first first hear the words that you put to the song? That was on you that see the reaction. That was mm -hmm. a, that was the reaction. That was his first time hearing it. Wow! On the video, went, oh, it missed his head. You know what he said? We well, come clearing that. We <laughs> 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 got to clear that thing, man. Get get Money Mo's over here so we can get his question. He a big Mo three fan. Okay, so he got to come talk to you. That's my other co-host. He he he's a Mo three fanatic. Okay, he say you know we argue about it a lot of times. Yeah. Cause yeah, yeah. Cause it, before Mo three passed away, it was a lot of people wouldn't like you. Yeah. Was he over there? Yeah. Uh, see, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't like you. See, I didn't see him with him like that. Here he come. I can hear him talking in the background. So, uh, man, no. But I just love your energy, man. I love the fact that how hard you go for the music, man. How how you stand consistent. Yeah. 
how you still you just keep pushing. I know you. I know you say your son and everything, but God got a gift in you, man. Your gift will make room for you as well. Thank you. Bro. So I already know that. I ain't tripping on you, man. And this ain't this. This the first of many. So I, I already know. I'm gonna come find you. Like this nigga just show up. So like y'all be like Boosie and Vlad, huh? <laughs> no, I, 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 that's what I be looking for. Cause I, I know already them niggas got a hell of a relationship. Uh, he'll Vlad every four three months. Hey, I, they gotta have some kind of agreement. Mm -hmm. I know they, they they loving each other in the movement. They saying we gonna make sure everybody. Keep that's history, going. man. Yeah, that's big. That's history, and and I'm here like that too, though. I, I mean, I'm this thing the blue just blowing up every day. I'm down to do more with you, way more. I'm come find you. Come on. That's what I did when I went down the red. I go, I go, would go find somebody. So let's uh, let's talk about it, man. So I know you got plenty of questions. We waited for the Mo three questions with you. Like 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 you said that you cried off a of T Rail song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 what tripped me out about this nigga. I said yeah. T Rail come and he said I cried off that. Because you gotta remember my partner Black had died. I Man, we were just together that night before he died. Yeah. And so I got that phone call like at six o'clock in the morning, and then I was like, damn. Then when he made that song. Like bro, just put me back in that same mood. Like. Damn. Like, you just don't know what to do that time. Like, bro. That, when, I, so when, the, when I heard the song, I ain't listen no more to your song, bro. Wow. So I ain't listen no, no more. more. No, because I felt it too much. I felt it too much. I'm like, bro, I can't listen to it no more, bro. Nigga, see how you can touch and people like, with music, every time, man? I, every time I listen, I get that same feeling. Like, every single time. The same so feeling it was hard back. on you when I told you you had to research TRL today? No, I had I, I ain't listen to that song, though. <laughs> <laughs> I put that song up the way as I already knew. Like, all the rest of the time, you'll be crying like hell. You, know what I mean? you don't cry. You just drop a tear. So I was like, bro, yeah. they put you yeah. back in that mode so, like you got a south side. Yeah. So when you made that song, that was uh, I, I heard you say your brother uh, uh, had he just passed when you did the, that first. One? My dog. Yeah. Yeah. My brother eight ball. We flipped five times in the car. Man. He flew out the windshield. I was in the back seat. And and, and that's what tripped me out because God, he spared your life. But then your brother, did he have any kids? No, he was he was twenty nine. He about to be thirty that next month. Probably like two weeks. He died two weeks before his birthday. Wow. And then, and that 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 night, we y'all were traveling because of music. Yeah, actually, I had a show here in Dallas, and then I went to church that next morning with DJ Merck, and then I left here. And we got in the wreck in Oklahoma City. Okay, okay, I know exactly where you at. On 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 uh, headed to, yeah, headed towards Kansas. Yeah, wow, man, that had to be tough, man. And that was your y'all the same mom? No, mm -mm. just just it's, it's my dog. Just just a he brother. was my brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it, man. It's crazy time they black died on the motorcycle yeah, that, on the highway. Yeah, like man. they ain't get shot. It's crazy they didn't get shot. They died like on accidents. Yeah, that's what make you feel it more. Yeah, DRS uh, was on here, and uh, when he was on here, uh, the guy that sang uh, "My Homies," mm -hmm. you know that the, the, the uh, yeah. gangster link. So the, the 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 relationship that you and uh, Mo Three built, we'll go to that. You know, um, how was it? Just because I never got to meet him. Mm -hmm. But I've everybody been on this show talking about it because I came out right, you know, kind of after that, you know, and I couldn't do this show without bringing his name of his legacy, the way he left this whole situation yeah. musically. Him and C. Struggs, R.I.P. to C. Struggs too. Just certain Struggs, ones yeah. I gave them different people. I've been trying to get. Uh, I want to interview Mo Three Mom bad because I just want to just show a love, you know. Mm -hmm. But I know already how people be trying to come at people like that, and I'm, I don't want to be that guy. Even if I could just do it behind the scene, you know, but Facts. it's just it's something about these people who paved the way for a lot of us to be even doing this. You know what I mean? The legacies that they left, the way that they paved, you know, the work that they done. It's more, yeah. but I'm just saying he one of those guys, man. His subject, people talk about him all the time, and and, and you know his family, man, his kids. Do you even do you know his kids or anything like no. that? No, me, me, me and Mo three were friends musically. Okay. Musically, and, and I used to tour with them a lot. Um, I used to call them every other day and just talk shit. And yeah. we used to clown each other all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's somebody I grew close with being on the road a lot. And um, I never really came to Dallas and really hang out with them in Dallas. It was more of a on the road, hanging out all the time, uh, being in the studio. And he was with Boosie a lot. I was with Boosie a lot. It's somebody I really connected with. And I, I really respond to real. He got a big heart too. He do. When I was, remember, I told you about my son, and I was, I didn't know about music, and I, it kind of messed my buzz up. Mo three let me go on tour with him. Do song, he'll bring me out. He lent it a hand. I think he was turning the favor for what uh, the road did. Cause remember the road did him the same way. Yeah. He was. Come on, T. Red, bring your white ass out here and sing this song, me. Bring your fat ass out here and sing this song, man. Come on. That's him. 
I'm like, shit, I'm out here rocking. And it helped me out. Wow. It helped me out a lot doing yeah. tours when I'm like that. And I appreciate it every day that he was doing something like that. He might miss a show. I could send T-Rail down there. He, he mentioned my name. He wasn't scared to do songs with me. Matter of fact, I talked to him the day before he passed. Wow. He was going to the studio the day after. Um, the day after. He was supposed to go to the studio the next day. He was going to knock a feature for me. He, I finally sent him a song that was fast. He was like, bitch, you finally made some fast shit. Let me ask you this. When you when I think about that, how was it the day when you found out that he, at that 11.55 in the morning when you found out Mo3 had gotten killed? Oh, I was fucked up. I called. Cause where were you at? I was at home. Uh, my living room. You seen it? You couldn't. You didn't see it happening. In, no, I was. I was we in Dallas. It's a different type. Of I'm in Kansas. I'm just chilling in my Correct. crib. Then I'm getting a call. First, I got a call from Rob Stovall, uh, Young Stove, who produced uh, a lot of his records. Yeah. Okay. Then he was like, "Man, you see what happened to Mo Three? I'm like, "What you mean? I haven't moved to Mo Three yesterday." I look on the off of my phone. Like, oh shit! So I thought it. Was, I, I don't believe shit till I see yeah, it. He always playing too. Yeah, because yeah, he did that shit before, and he was playing for a video. Mm -hmm. I don't believe shit. So then I, I, I hit Rain up. He went answering the phone, and he finally hit me. I'm like, damn, that shit crazy as fuck. Broke down crying. Wow. Cause that's my dog, that's my partner, my homeboy. You know what I'm saying? That's that's somebody's dad. That's he's a mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, y'all listen to his music. But you gotta meet him in person. Yeah, he's funny. He's different. He's he kick it with you. He open. He real. He he real humble too. So did you were you able to come up to when the funeral and all that? No. Yes. Okay. But you just knew what had happened. And, uh huh. Okay. Exactly what happened. Yeah, because you was just trying to figure out, okay, where was the placement and all this. So you you just don't know. Don't know. Cause it was it was during that time it was an intense time I remember it bro super intense yeah in the Dallas area mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's 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 why I asked you I just have to know how a person felt where their mindset was at you know my, my this mother time. knows that I'm tour with Mo three a lot and she would she would say things like don't go don't go to don't go to Texas don't go to Texas yeah that's like that's like I knew I was that's what she, that's there. that's things she would say to me or. You know, I'm like, don't go. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, this is crazy. When you think about uh, just uh, the, 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 are y'all considered the South? Kansas, Mid Midwest. Midwest. So when you look at the music, how do you feel like the music is now? For as just on a whole, do you feel like it's, it's, the music is growing and, uh, and, and, in the Midwest? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, we got places like Chicago, Detroit. I was just up there. Detroit bumping. Detroit's on fire. That's Midwest. But Kansas is, I'm coming with it. I'm trying to start a, get artists out of Kansas, Missouri, and Illinois. We, it's it's more, just not just Chicago and Detroit, it's other places like Nebraska's. They don't get a shot. No, I ain't never heard. Who, is there any rappers from? I never heard one from Nebraska. Never. Uh, there's one that's, he signed a Tech Nine named King Iso. King, King Iso, he, he pretty, he he's pretty, pretty popping out of Nebraska. Yeah, Tech Nine really different. He got like a coat following, man. Yeah, Tech Nine could travel by himself. Man, them niggas came over here looking for his stuff one time. I couldn't believe it. They, they come over looking for his stuff. I was like, it was something I had that he had dealings with. Because I got his picture. Me and him met years ago. Yeah. I'm like, these niggas just come. And then the niggas start coming back, bringing little things that he had from Tech Nine. Them. I'm like, how the hell he get it? And it, it was exclusive stuff. I'm being real. Tech made the, the Forbes list off of merch. So that's what it was. Yeah. He was like, man, this is what everybody doing. I was like, how the hell he doing? I can't find this stuff. He was wanting me to find this Tech 9 stuff. Yeah. And I couldn't do it. I'm, I don't know where it's at. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, he had he He's big on merch. So how are you doing on merch? I, <laughs> Actually, I'm about to buy two more machines. I'm about to start running my own merchandise. Okay. I got the uh, the machine that sells for you, and then I got the yeah, uh, embroidery machine. machine. Yeah. I, I went to L.A., and, and I checked out this guy's. Factory, I'm like, man, I, can get, I can get a couple of these machines. I can do this myself. Mm -hmm. I make good money. I mean, I'm a, I'm a see and it can do type person. I'm a Nick Cannon. You, you, you man, drum line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard I can do. I see I can do. Yeah, but just play it when you see it. Yeah. Let me ask you this, man. Rob Wave, man, because uh, he he is the, the one that everybody when I be listening they be like man Rod Wade go hard Rod Wade go hard I, I look at you Rod Wade Ray uh, 
uh, uh, and the Reyes. The, the pain and the music and just going to that place and singing these songs, man. It, am I missing somebody? Mo3. Uh, Mo3, yeah, but he passed away. But yeah, yeah Mo3. That, yeah. That, who, who had this style first? Which, that pain style? Yeah, that, that singing pain style. Me, I came out first. You had it first. Look, times don't lie. My dog came out in 2014. Yeah. yeah, he did have first. He did. Yeah. And when I was you, first one to with Boosie. I, I, I toured Boosie before Mo3 did. I think it was uh, Dries. Then, the, then um, no, the, was, Mo3 came. Mo3 three came. Three down after, three after me. Then the red. But I'm saying though, uh, and, and if you just some of the red old songs like that too. But it, them the ones that just came out newer songs, you hear more. That's why. But really? I think the red then Mo yeah. three. Cause Mo yeah. three had just started rapping. He ain't been rapping that long. He ain't been rapping that long no. in the past. How long was no, he rapping? Like six years. That's a long hell. No, it ain't. But like when you first. How long you rapping when, when around that time when Mo like eight? Okay, so that I'm two years before three, probably a year and a half too. Wow. So what you what do you plan to take this to, man? If you were gonna take it to the next level, how would you take it to the next I, level? The, the reason I I probably don't get my full credits because, like I told you, I wasn't making all those songs because of my child. Yeah, I would have gave you way more pain records if I'd have had a. I, man, I probably made more of those back. pain records like that. But yeah, well, I did. I did another one called "I Got to" with Boosie came right after that. Okay. Then pain with Kevin Gates. I was really. You did. A, did he do pain with? I didn't know, I didn't know that. that. I, ain't I got. That. I had song money back, yo. Before he even got super cracking, I Are worked. Are you with, serious? I work for everybody, bro. I've been really out here. I just ain't get this super attention. I'm not from Dallas where I got multiple people. I'm from Kansas. Yeah. My demographic is mostly white. Yeah. You know? So, I white think Tech 9 makes the music he makes. Yeah, he and did. And prosper so good that being from that sense. area. I don't have an urban fan base until, until Pika, Kansas to promote to. So, the reason I, it took me so long is I have to travel so much. I'm traveling right now every day. I can't make it from there. Yeah. Yeah. I can't go to the mall and, and get it cracking or do it. I can't go. They won't let me go to the high schools and perform. But but how what, how, is, how is Atlanta embracing you? Because you, how long you been down there now? About three months. Atlanta's embracing me like crazy. I love Atlanta. That's a part of the process and then to get everybody to start mm -hmm. seeing it more, marketing it better. And yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. What's the best thing that happened to you in Atlanta? The best thing that happened to me in Atlanta? Yeah. Probably all the interviews I was doing. Yeah. Uh, the networking, the network is, is key. You see somebody everywhere you go. In Atlanta, it's Black Hollywood yeah. for real. Yeah, no, I'll be down there. I you definitely know, I, know it. One day I'm with, one day I'm with Drummer Boy. Next day I'm with Derez. Next day I'm with Dro. Next day I'm with Tusi. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like whoever I'm with, you might meet somebody. You can. It's Atlanta. It's Atlanta. Man, who would you like to work with before I get you off here? Who would you like to work with? I want to work with the female artist. I'm trying to work with like her. I want to work with Kaylani. I want to work with. Uh, I want to work with uh, like, like like those women. Like you know the women artists that's cracking. And if you want to go male wise, like Ty Dolla Sign. Okay. Uh, P and B Rock. I'm trying to get that sound. Yeah, that yeah, R &B. yeah, yeah. That R and bring it and flip it. Would you ever do something with a uh, reggae artist? Oh yeah. Like I, who would you choose? Um. Uh, See, I'm with Empire. They got a lot of African artists that they did. <laughs> they song. do. That oh, was a Fire Boy. He just went gold hard. They got they they, they he with Empire. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's easier to work with people with the label. Yeah, I mean, I I, I work with, I like I I don't work with all the rappers. I don't work with a lot of rappers. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, I work like I said, I work with Money Bag. I don't work with. I got a song with Dolph too. Yeah. I got a song with uh. Oh, anybody probably think I pretty much know. Yeah, I'm ready to know them. I will cross paths across with been in the studio. I'm ready to really tap into R&B. Like I really love R&B. You want to make it to where it's that that new fresh style. Yeah. You're already doing. To me, like I said, they don't call it that, but that way that y'all make that sound happen is so close to and similar. I can deal with that. I'm working with the V. I want to work. I'm gonna work with Vito. You know, uh, Eric Billinger. I'll do Charlie Wilson, but you flipped. You flipped that. Uh, that that. You you flipped a genuine. Yeah. You flipped a. Uh, uh, you flipped a tank. You will you flip a cute sweat? You know you over there in that. Man, if you had my phone, you go crazy right now. <laughs> I got I got so many flips in this song. Phone is nuts. They won't let. I done flipped. Um, I flipped the Marion. I flipped. Uh, yeah, R. Kelly. I got an R. Kelly flip oh, on her. Damn. I, I flipped. I uh, fell on your booty. And you think if it come out, what do you think people would say about that? 
Uh-oh. That would be jamming though. <laughs> they gonna have it's to. Ain't they R. Kelly is T. Rail. It's just his beat. I know it, but they gonna be like, damn. Yeah, but you can't support. It, but look, I don't support none. Kale's did. That's it's, well, his lifestyle. Is his lifestyle. Kobe Bryant was my favorite basketball player. Basketball player. I didn't say he was my favorite person in a relationship. There it is. I get where you're going with that. R. Kelly's my was my favorite singer. I didn't say he was my favorite person of who he chooses sexually. I like his music. I like the way Kobe shoot the three. Damn right. You know what I'm saying? That's the total difference. When you like a person's what they do and what you, they separated. Sometimes they, when you get in a relationship with a girl, you tell her you gotta learn her. When you're a rapper, you gotta learn the difference between being my artistry and being who I am as a person. That's what you tell a yeah, girl, right? Yeah, yeah. Why can't we learn the difference between a person and then what their job is? No, that's real. Mm-hmm. Why? You, I tell, I know, I dare to tell our girl all the time. Hey, you gotta learn the difference between T-Rail and Terrell. No, I get it, man. T-Rail and then Terrell. You, yeah, this is at the end of the day, it's a brand. Yeah, but sometimes T-Rail comes home instead of Terrell. T-Rail does come you, home sometimes. When you talk, I you got pull this. that thing like that so she can talk. So, sometimes you gotta learn how to turn that switch on and off too. I'm human. Mm-hmm. So you, just let me know, hey. I need you to leave T-Rail outside. <laughs> so, so what's your top three artists of all time, dead or alive? I asked that. Any genre. Any genre? Any genre. It could be rap. It could be whatever. Said, how many people? Three. It's going to be crazy. Oh, why you say that? He going to kill it. Number one. <laughs> he said it's going to be crazy. Why you say it's going to be crazy? Somebody we ain't here to watch. Nah, it's going to be. He, he gonna, it's going to be Michael Jackson, number one. No. Nah. Let's go. Who's, number my, one. who's my top three? Of all time. Is it in order? In, yeah. Yeah, in order. Number that's, one. That's hard. Number one. Everybody been on here and done it. Give me number one. Number one. It might change, but today. My number one artist of all time. It's people we ain't heard. Probably Kales. See? Okay. Kelly. R. Kelly number one. We didn't got that one before, but that's a, that's a heavy right now. Number one. No, no, we done had him number one before. I number love two. Drake. Drake number two. Yeah, that ain't bad. I love shout out Drake. And three probably be uh you making this hard, bro. Three artists? Three always be hard. That's why I do it their way. Number three be like, I gotta let everybody else go for this one person. That's messed <laughs> up, bro. Hey, my number three too. Any genre. Any genre? Number three. Okay, three. R. Kelly, Drake, and who else? Mm, I don't know, bro. I listen to a lot of music. Aretha Franklin. I don't listen to Aretha that much. <laughs> Who would it be, number three? Give me one. Man, you making it tough on me, bro. Just one. This is one more. You already got it down here. Probably Boosie. Boosie. Shout out Boosie. That nigga made it, man. That top three, man. I rock with Boosie. I love the way. I, I love that. Man, Boosie so, man. But if you listen to my style, I had the Mo3 in there, too. Yeah, Mo3. You can't. Man, he different, bro. He, he, the way he had pain Raw, when bro. you seen him in that kitchen like that man I seen you went in the kitchen on a few after like later. like Jay-Z and Big right you know how Jay-Z he'll, he'll do Big and he said I spit a Big verse cause I'm only I'm Big my brother uh, we, uh, how you say that line yeah. I feel the way I'm saying about like Mo3 so when you hear me do a song like I Deserve and it sound oh he sound like Mo3 damn right I, I, I love that sound I love that sound I'm going hard I love when you sing. But I'm going I'm to let, let y'all know something real that I did. You ever heard my song, Eat, 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 Eat? eat, eat. Yeah. I called Mo3 when I made a song. I said, hey, bro, I'm about to steal your swag on this song. What did he say? Laughed. Go ahead. Do the shit. Because yeah. he listened, he redid the same beat and listened to his song. His, uh, 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 nigga, try me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Side, side, side. You know he'll do the same shit. Yeah. Now listen to my song. Somebody freaky is hard to find. It's the same shit. Same, same, same cadence. Same shit. I love, I love it. my my boy, my boy gone. I love the sound like a motherfucker. Me too. Yeah. Every why why are we letting gone. it go? I'm not gonna let it go. I said on my show last night, San Antonio. I said, can't nobody sing three like me. That's dope. That's hard. I sing it every show. That's hard. That's hard. I sing every fucking show. Outside is my song. You do that outside. That's that. That's which so, one better? Uh, I knew you were gonna ask that. With this, we been no threes. <laughs> Easy, huh? I, I'm here to vouch myself. I perform that song every city I go to. Nobody's 
Everybody sing Mo three. Everybody, you, as soon as that song come on, do, 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 yeah, Mo three. All you want to hear is ooh yeah. yeah. You did that, man. Like, no, <laughs> nigga, I was having nine day. He got it. Bro, I was hearing that song for months before it came out. Man, that's all you want to hear. How did you feel when you first heard that song? When you heard it, what did off you think? touch? When you sitting there with that damn the the chopper yeah, in, there, yeah, in the yeah, kitchen. Yeah. Come on, man. I'm, I'm a huge Mo3 fan. When he did it, what you say, man? T, T what you say, man? You I, call there, man. I call Ray. I call Ray. Hey, can I get this? What's that song at? <laughs> you know how you talk? It, 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 it's, coming, real. Yeah, it's, got, it's coming real. It's coming real. It's coming real. It's coming real. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. Where was you at? You remember where you was at when you heard it? When you heard it, what did you, when you heard it, where was you at? At the crib, probably you at the somewhere. crib, and you heard him in the kitchen. He was just in the kitchen, going crazy, just like I heard. It's been a long time coming. I love him in the kitchen. Come on, in the kitchen. You didn't notice in my LO3 video, I, I I put the hat to the side, I seen it. and I was in the kitchen I like I was it. him. I seen it. You know what I'm saying? I put the dude bandana on with the with the Mo3 jacket on. Mm -hmm. I'm at made. I made that video special for him. Yeah, that Mo3 jacket was cold. Too. I'm not I only like a, it. my, my my friend. I'm a fan. No real talk. Real talk. I learned so much doing this this podcast. I done learned a lot, bro. I learned so much in a year. I never would have knew none of the, a lot of stuff that I know. I know a lot of stuff about a lot of things because a lot of people been sitting in that seat mm -hmm. yeah. telling me about different stories that went on. And Mo3 got some of the dopest stories on this podcast. <laughs> I got some stuff. I got a few. Of them. I bet right. you do. Y'all would y'all would throw it off, man. Why not? Y'all young. Throw it off. Now I'm talking about the youngness and just being young. I'm an old nigga, so I know it's some crazy stories. I remember he had that big ass Hummer. You know, yeah. big ass Hummer. Like this little short ass nigga drive this big ass hover, wide ass forehead ass nigga, <laughs> big ass. Big, I, um, he fired to a Balenciaga's on you know this uh, shit. That, that blue uh, drop top. Yeah, Same I don't way. know. One day I was with him. His car got his car got stolen out his garage. Damn. He was in the studio. With me. This the only nigga I know. Car stolen. He's still in the studio. He's still in the studio. Like, T Red, just let me go on there real quick. I right, hold on. Thank me later, nigga. He went there and knocked his shit out. He's all right, be back because these niggas have stolen my car. He's on that phone looking. You know, it, but he did it for me real quick. Damn. Just real. Real. That's my he dog. Know, he knows you're going to handle it later. Yeah. I got yeah. it right now. Two unreleased from all three songs on my phone. That I ain't when are you going to let them go, man? They oh, special, aren't they? They just special to me. I know. I just listen to it myself. And that's dope, man. I just vibe to he done them. He done them for you. They're my records. I want to hear them. I got we re, We redid Juicy by Pretty Ricky. Damn. Together. And then we got one called. Uh, I want to hear him. I'll kill him. I'll show you to you. Then, then I got one called. Uh, um, we redid a uh, uh, sick of being lonely every night while my man. Yeah, yeah. Home. And we redid that beat any other night. That beat. Y'all having hard. a good time. We that killed. Like you remember that? That's that one out. That's a memory, man. In the Dope memory. Yeah, I got it. It's all eight. Eight the verse. Dope memory. Yeah. Man, I, I know this, is, I, and, and I hate to let you go, but you got to get out of here. What's your? How can people get a hold of you? And I know you. Everybody know you. They see you. But how do they get your handle on Instagram and all that? Just T Rail Seven Eight Five. Just T Rail Seven Eight Five. All right, man. Any, any more questions? Yeah, we good. Say, man, thank, thank you, you so much for coming on. Ball Talk. We gonna do this I'm over and back. over again. I'm this your right. home base now. When come you, you, if you tell me I need you over here, I'm gonna come. You are gonna be like, damn, that nigga. Me too. We gonna. I wanna bring my son Jordan back. Bring him on here. We can interview him. I'm serious. You gonna, you gonna be promised you yeah, gonna do we, it. We can do it for my TV, his TV show. Let's do it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, got you. You gotta tell me when we're gonna set it up. We're gonna have a good time. All right, no. No, nah, shoot, my wife want, here. He ain't gonna want no vodka and juice. He gonna want some. Tell me what I get. All right, guys, you gonna have a good time. Whatever you doing, he man, likes we Reese's. Do. Okay, Whatever you doing, we doing, man. T Real, thank you. you for coming on Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk, man. Let's do it. Thank you. Man, guys. check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101.